Hi all. Today we are going to learn about names and bindings used in programming languages. So in this session we are going to learn about how to name various variables, functions, methods, etc. in programming languages. How the binding is performed and what all are the different classes of binding time that takes place inside a programming. First let's understand what is name and what is the significance of name in programming languages name is a string of character used to identify some entity in a program the identifiers that allow us to refer variables constants functions types operations etc usually a name can have a maximum of 31 characters usually in fortran 95 it allows up to 31 characters the version of C language, C18 and had no length limitations actually but only first 31 characters are significant or the first 31 characters will be considered by the compiler. In C99 version only the first 63 characters are significant and rest of the characters will not be considered by the compiler. Even some compilers allow variable names up to 247 characters. So typically there is no length limitation for a variable name. Next let's see. What are the generic rules for naming a variable or a method? In most of the programming languages, these common rules are followed. The first rule is, it should begin with a letter or a character followed by a sequence of letters or digits or underscore character. That means the first letter should be a character that is capital A to Z or small a to Z. Next is, keywords or reserved words cannot be used. As we all know that in C there are 32 keywords like in, float, care, if, else like that. We cannot use these keywords for naming a variable. So keywords or reservoirs cannot be used. Next is white spaces are not allowed. For example, we cannot name a variable like roll space number. Either we have to write it as roll underscore number or we have to write it to the roll number. White spaces cannot be allowed in between the variable names. Next is commas, special characters and other than underscore cannot be used. So the only special character that we can use is underscore. These are the generic rules for naming a variable or method in most of the programming languages. Next let's see what are the design issues or what are the constraints to be considered while designing a programming language regarding the name. First thing is are the names are case sensitive or not for example c java etc follows case sensitivity that means h in uppercase letter and h in lowercase letter refers different memory so case sensitive means whether h h and h see that is three different h first one full in uppercase second one the first letter is in uppercase and the other letters are in lowercase and the third one is all the three letters of H is in small letters. If these three different H represents the same memory then we can say that the language does not support case sensitivity. But majority of the programming languages follows case sensitivity like C, Java, Python etc. So these three are referring three different distinct memory locations in the system. Next design constraint is whether we are able to use the reservoirs or keywords for naming memory variables. As we all know that in C, Java, etc. we cannot use the keyword for naming memory variables. So these are the design issues. The best solution is make the language case sensitive and the keywords or reservoirs cannot be used for naming a variable. Next let's see what is name and how a name is binded with a value and an address. Consider the statement in programming int h is equal to 21 semicolon. So what will happen while executing this particular instruction is h is a variable name of type integer and a value 21 is assigned to that particular variable. So an integer will consume 4 bytes of memory that is 32 bits so the address 1000, 1001, 1002 and 1003 may be reserved for the variable age. So age is the variable name and the value 21 is binded with this 
particular variable name age so this is what is happening while the execution of the statement int age is equal to 21 all this mapping takes place inside the random access memory as we all know that the program execution is taking place in the main memory or in the RAM so variable names are the most common names used in programs the address of a variable is the machine address with which it is associated so the variable name age is associated with the addresses 1000 to 2003 because an integer variable will consume 4 bytes of memory for example each address represents each byte next is the type the type determines the range of values the variable can store and the set of operations that are defined for values of the type. The various types can be like int, float, char, string, etc. For an integer, it will consume 2 or 4 bytes of memory. In modern computer systems, an integer will consume 4 bytes of memory. A float will also consume 4 bytes of memory. A character will consume 1 byte memory. Next is the value. The value of the variable is the contents of the memory cell or cells associated with the variable. In this example, this 21 is the value. This value 21 is mapped with the variable or the name age. Next, let's see what is binding. Binding is the association of a name with an object. In the previous example, the name age is associated with the memory addresses 1000 to 1003 and the value 21 is associated with the name H. So these are the different sorts of binding. Scope is the lifetime of a binding of a name to an object that is how long this name is mapped with that particular object. We have heard about different types of scope like static scope, dynamic scope, etc. We will learn about static scope and dynamic scope in the upcoming sessions. Next is binding time. The time at which the particular binding is created or the time at which the association between a name and an entity is created is called as binding time. And the referencing environment is the complete set of bindings in effect at a particular point in a program. For example, in functional and logical programming languages the name can be binded with a value in procedure languages like C, Java etc the name can be binded with a value and the memory address can be mapped with this particular value so we can access this particular value either using the name or using the address of that particular variable next let's learn what are the different classes of binding time the first one is the language design time. The syntax and semantics of a language are typically set as language design time. The language designer should define what are the control constructs to be followed, how the various control constructs should be executed and how the variable declarations are written, whether static or dynamic scoping should be used in the new programming language or not, etc. Next is language implementation time. The binding that will take place during implementation can be the exception handling during runtime, arithmetic overflow like division by zero or the organization of maximum size for the stacks and the heap memory that can be dynamically allocated, all these sort of things. Or even we can define the precision or the number of bits to be needed in the result of a particular arithmetic operation. All these things can be defined during the implementation time of a language. Next is program writing time. Here the programmers choose the algorithms, data structures and name. Next is compile time. During the compile time, the binding of various names with objects, methods, etc. takes place. For example, for a static variable the stack is allocated and for a dynamic variable allocation the heap memory is allocated etc next is link time a program is not at all complete until various modules in the program should be joined together using a linker the linker chooses the overall layout of the modules with respect to one another and resolves the inter-module references that is there may be a function which will 
pass argument from one module to another module. So this sort of linking, the static link and the dynamic link, reference management, all these should be managed during the link time. Next is load time. Loading is the process of loading the program from the secondary memory to the main memory with the help of the operating system. During this process, virtual addresses are chosen. The physical address can be rewritten at the runtime or it can be changed. So all these sort of things are managed during the load time. And the last binding time is the runtime binding, which is also called as dynamic binding time. Binding is delayed until runtime such as dynamic typing in interpreted languages. That is the type of a variable cannot be determined until the user inputs the value. So this sort of binding can be takes place during runtime. So these are the seven different classes of binding time that usually seen in various programming languages. Thank you.